My talk today is a bit different from other people because I'm going to focus attention on material science for sustainability. I'd like to uh, share that, uh, with you uh, three important numbers. The first number represents the amount of plastic waste drifting in the ocean. The second number represents the annual amount of plastic waste flowing into the ocean. And the third number represents the total amount of plastic materials uh, pr produced by human beings. And we have recycled only 9% so far. We still have a beautiful ocean and a planet. And however, if you take a closer look, then you will find these particles called microplastics. This issue is serious and certainly break the biological system in the near future if we don't take any action. So what we have to do, suppose your pair of grass is broken. That happens sometimes, what would you do? Are you going to discard or recycle? Recycle is actually uh, energy demanding very closely. On the other hand, if you are able to repair broken pieces by compression, for example, at room temperature, that would be great. 10 years ago, uh, groundbreaking technology was reported by Professor Ludwig Reiber, self-healable rubber. Well, what is great about this technology is that you can repair broken pieces by compression with the fingers. So many of you wonder if this great technology is gonna be expandable to hard plastic uh, with a far better, greater range of applications. The answer at that time was no, because the uh, polymer chains in such hard plastic are frozen to mobile. So re-entanglement that is necessary for the repair is unlikely. So polymer glass is a representative and hard plastic material which cannot be repaired once broken like window glass. On the contrary to this prediction, we found accidentally that this particular polymer, polyether thiourea, is a new type of polymer glass which is mechanically tough but can be repaired very easily at room temperature. So what you see here are two broken pieces of a polymer glass. Once again, this is very mechanically tough, as you can confirm by this heating sound, okay? But if you just compress the fractured surfaces together, then even at room temperature, they are merged to recover the original shape like this. So that makes the company very unhappy, actually. But for us, it's very convenient. All we have to do is to compress at room temperature, then everything is okay. Then I'm gonna apply a 300 gram load to this repaired plastic uh, glass. And actually nothing happens. And if you just fabricate a five millimeter diameter cable of a polymer glass, then you can lift up actually 15 kilogram even after repair. That's great. And five years ago, you Yanagisawa in his PhD work was trying to get the, uh, this type of particular molecule, biomolecular group. In the course of this study, he accidentally found that its intermediate polymer is stick, uh, non tacky but broken pieces can be healed upon compression. We are surprised. But this was the beginning of uh, development of self-healable polymer glass. Well, after five years of research, we published a paper on this work last year. And this material actually was able to be repaired over wide temperature range down to 10 degrees C and multiple times without any problem. So um, this, you see that uh, huge uh, advantage of repair before recycle. So what we needed to do further is that one drawback of the current version is it's rather poor water resistance. So if you are interested in developing out of the application of this material, then you need to enhance further this point. But at any rate, by the year 2050, it is anticipated that the amount of plastic waste is almost comparable to the amount of fish living on the earth. So we need to take an immediate action. And we hope that our technology, uh, self-healable rubbers and the plastic would contribute a lot to the solution of this difficult issue. Thanks very much.